All right. Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to And This Is Why, an LPM podcast. I'm Kevin McMenamin, your host, and we're here talking about Meraki, and this is why. So with me today is Matt Moreno. He's the product specialist, global enterprise IoT, and Andreas Nordgren, who is with business development for Camera Intelligence, which I'm really looking forward to hearing about Camera Intelligence, Andreas. So Matt and Andreas, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Really excited to have you guys here. Now, Matt, we we spoke before on uh, our other show, um, So What Do You Do? And we learned about what Meraki does, right? So we've, we've talked a little bit more about the company and what they do, but let's talk a little more specifically about what e- each of you gentlemen do. Um, Matt, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about your role at Meraki. Sure, absolutely. So uh, my, my title is PSS or Product Specialist, and that's exactly what I do. I am a specialist uh, for sales, and I am directed by sales, obviously, uh, for global enterprise. And global enterprise is a term that we use at Cisco for our largest accounts, uh, Fortune 500 type accounts, big geographically dispersed type accounts, a global reach, if you will, North American based, uh, at least in the sense for my role. But that's what I do. I am customer facing, uh, selling the IoT portfolio from Cisco Meraki to our largest accounts. Beautiful. And Andreas, tell me about this Camera intelligence, um, because I, I know from what I learned about Meraki in our first program, that Meraki's got some some pretty smart cameras, for, for lack of better words, right? So let's talk about some of the, the uh, intelligence side of things that you work on, and, and what is your role in business development around camera intelligence? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we spend a lot of time making sure that we can add more value than just security use cases with, with our cameras. So in my role in, in camera intelligence, I work primarily of extracting information from videos and making sure that we can help and support businesses uh, to get data points to support their in their operations, uh, working with machine learning algorithms, both things that we do ourselves, but also together with partners. Beautiful. So let's dive into that a little bit, because um, I think, you know, as we've talked about having these cameras that can collect various other data um, and some of the other sensors and things that things can touch. And then you've got a whole uh, sort of ecosystem and a, and a backend suite of, of uh, intelligence and analytics and things that, that Meraki offers. Tell us a little bit more about that whole process and, and what is the benefit to me as a, as a retail customer? Yeah. Well, in general, I mean, it's super exciting time in the era of, of, of computer vision. I've, I've been in the industry for a number of years and we've just seen the last couple of years it's just exploding and accelerating the the things you can do and the things you can extract from from images um and of course with all these um latest evolution um there's so many things that we can help our customers with and we do something ourselves and we focus our efforts on extracting information from understanding how people move about um, in a store or basically understanding where vehicles are, understanding some of those core objects. But there's tons of other things that our customers and retailers may want to learn about. Um, so we, we partner with a number of companies that, are, that do different things, both on top of our core detectors, but also build their own machine learning algorithms. Um, that can help detect um, any type of object in a retail store environment. To look at uh, uh, shelves, for example. So there are a number of of things uh, where we, together with our partners, can help different types of of, of customer use cases. And of course, this is a really important aspect of of how we work, that we both do things ourselves, but open up our platform for a number of partners, uh, because there's no single provider in this industry that can make sure that they can do all the exciting things uh, in this area in this space because there is so many aspects of of uh, new machine learning models and how you process data and how you aggregate that data to new insights so it's really important to have um, that wide range of partners that can help our customers with different types of use cases excellent so Matt, let's let's talk about use cases here, right? Let's talk about you know um, you've got global you know responsibility, global sales. What are some of those customers saying that they're doing with Meraki um, that they probably can't do elsewhere, right? But give me a couple of those business use cases, and then let's go back to Andreas and let's kind of surface you know what that means, right? So you tell me the success they're having, and then Andreas is going to tell us why they're having it, how they're having it, and get in, get into that geeky techie stuff. 
Absolutely. So, um, and that's the fun part, right? That's the, that's the song. Exactly. That's what we get into, uh, et cetera. So um, you're right. I do cover a lot of big customers and that means usually they're geographically dispersed and retailers, as you know, especially more uh, brick and mortar retailers have a lot of geographically dispersed stores, right? So first and foremost, even without the machine learning, the architecture of Meraki in general, edge-based, that's key, right? Cloud managed helps them achieve that and roll out faster simply because there's no infrastructure that's needed to support the cameras like servers and workstations, et cetera, right? That's awesome. But the machine learning aspect of this, they can use the cameras that they weren't even thinking about prior, right? Yes, they're still do doing what traditional loss prevention does, making sure that no one's either stealing anything or there's no slip and falls, et cetera. They have an audit of that. Certainly the cameras are there, but maybe we can do a little bit more for them. While that camera, this is an example, a true example of one of our customers, is looking in the warehouse or the back of house uh, section of their stores, it's still seeing all of those things that are happening from an audit perspective, but it's also looking at space utilization, right? It's saying, well, what's the negative aspect of, the space being utilized. I have shelves everywhere, but I have empty shelves in certain spots. Well, that means two things, one of two things. One, I have either too much product on in the store or I don't have enough product to fill shelves in the future, which is worse, right, in that sense. So just, you know, getting a better understanding of what's happening in the back of house, let alone the front of house, gives them a nice, easy understanding of ROI for, for a new type of camera in the back there. What about... You know, uh, another one that they're using for same same retailer for that matter, camera over the aisle, right, can now determine if there's any object obstruction inside of that aisle. That means two different things. One, either the end caps or the product placement for certain things aren't in the right spot because it's now, you know, they're not getting the maximized profiting component of what they were intended to do, or even worse, it's causing a blockage from an ADA perspective or something else, or it's blocking other products from being taken off the shelf. Our cameras can identify those areas, alert those areas from the merchandiser that needs to know, and oh, all by the way, still doing what traditional video surveillance cameras are supposed to do, all onto the edge. Well, and so you've got obviously safety aspects, you know, from that. For sure that um, sales aspects from that product availability and, and product availability that's not being available because it's blocked, right? As you said, um, yeah. and you've got safety, you know, well, we said safety, but security um, opportunities as well, especially if there was intentionally uh, blocked or being blocked so that something else can happen on the other side of that. So now, Andreas, you've got these cameras that are looking at this situation. How are they, how are they interpreting that? How are they getting that data to the retailers? What's the What's the technical side of what's happening here with uh, with the infrastructure of Meraki? Yeah, there are a few things. Well, in in general, for um, for retailer, I mean, some of these things that retailers generally ask for, it may be uh, obstructing object, but also basically understanding how many people are in the store, which is a core metric for many uh, retailers. That we can do. Um, on the camera itself, basically letting a security camera also work as a people counting solution, um, using uh, virtual tripwires and making sure that uh, the retailers do understand how the traffic is into the store. So th these are some of the things that we can provide uh, natively with, with the Meraki cameras. And then there are other dimensions that, that Matt mentioned that we can do together uh, in collaboration with, uh, with, with some of our partners, uh, meaning specific objects or specific um, uh, shelf space compliance uh, metric and things like that. So we have the capability for our partners to build specific machine learning model uh, that they have used or they have trained uh, and deploy them on our cameras. Uh, basically having their models run on our infrastructure and also then making it still as easy as a general Meraki uh, type of, of infrastructure to manage and, and uh, maintain, but using third-party algorithms to get additional insights out from the cameras. Um, so those specific models and the detectors that we run on board, we provide the data output from over MQTT. So it's fairly e easy for our partners to integrate and build other solutions on that. And of course, also we have partners that take the data output from our cameras, 
and combine that with the point of sale data from their from their transaction system and then can do these kind of the classical um, metrics that are important for retailers like conversion rates and, and, and basket size and things like that. Uh, but we also, I mean, see a lot of changes in, in how how retailers are, are operating and it's kind of of course, everybody knows that the reality looks a bit different after COVID. So that has also Im impacted retailers' um, metrics and what they're using in their stores. So uh, I think some of them are moving towards not necessarily thinking about conversion rates and only um, people counting that is important in the stores, but also product engagement at the shelves. Basically, having the stores being that um bearer of the of the brand and the brand experience maybe this the sales will happen somewhere else but in order for retailers and brands to kind of optimize that customer experience in the store um it may be about metrics like um, engagement levels how what's the dwell time at a certain product display uh, and those to improve that whole brand experience of the stores then the retailers need to understand um, what are the metrics? How do we measure this? How do we improve uh, the brand experience from yesterday to where we, where we want to go? And in that dimension, we can also use cameras and the data output to track the, the journey throughout the stores. And this is something we do together with partners. We provide the tracker in the cameras and our partners are able to provide the insights from that, basically to give metrics on increased um, uh, customer interaction and dwell time and also like reducing frictions in the store, which is also something people got used to from when buying online. So you click and you pay and you go. Um, don't want to have any frustration with standing in line in the queue. So all these frustrations in the stores, we can help customers to minimize with the data output from our cameras and our partners to lower these kind of frictions and, and, and barriers uh, that you would have in a physical retail store. So all these type of, of metrics are being used um, to kind of make sure that the store operations are being improved. Excellent. So I, so I know if there's product on the shelf and I know if people are engaging with that product on the shelf um, and I've got obviously other metrics as far as, you know, which direction they're coming in, where they're going out what they're buying, what they're not buying uh, for that matter as well, right? Where they're not going. Um, if I want to change the, the layout of my store to make a better customer experience and so forth, that's a lot of information for me as a retailer to be able to absorb. Um, Matt, where does all that information go? Like there's all these data points that you're pulling in and all this is, is getting surfaced. Where is it going and how are you uh, bringing it to the to the actual retailer's attention is there is there a dashboard are there notifications are there you know what are those things that are helping me do my job as a retailer sure so uh just to also level set this yes we are collecting a tremendous amount of data but nothing from the personal identification component you know uh we take that you know with a lot of pride about how we protect that data right that is absolutely vital for us right as a matter of fact we don't even um, store any of like the facial recognition components within uh, within the scenes. It's it's a it's a policy at Cisco. We consider that a human rights issue uh, that we just do not collect facial recognition and use that in technology. Nor we do we allow our ecosystem partners to do it either. Uh, but the reality is, there's still a lot of data that's being collected. We call it metadata, right? It's zeros and ones. Um, and it is transformed into the MQTT broker, adding the machine learning stuff, and then the whole equation to that is there. And then what happens is, is that depending on how the customer is consuming that, whether it is a, a dashboard directly from the Meraki dashboard, we do have core analytics that we can give them license free, the way that Andreas had mentioned with people counting uh, and advanced machine uh, people counting algorithms that we can do. Um, or with our ecosystem partners via APIs, right? And then their APIs would develop and show in their dashboard formats, whatever metric it is that the customer needs that our cameras in its core don't give them, okay? Like that's warehouse utilization or advanced analytics of queuing and things like that, right? Um, et cetera. But the reality is everything is metadata and everything is shown on dashboards, right? Very little of our ecosystem partners even require another server component on-prem to be able to do this. They can actually do it with, with the metadata that's coming from the camera itself and provided them into another type of dashboard via the cloud. Excellent. Excellent. 
Well, uh, before we wrap up today, um, Matt, Andreas, anything else about Meraki that we should be uh, making sure that, that our listeners are aware of? Oh, I don't think we have enough time for that, Kevin. There are so <laughs> many things that I would love to talk about with anybody, but nevertheless, um, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a different business model. It's a different architecture, and it is a different types of different use cases that we're solving for not only retailers, but other verticals as well. Um, and it's a learning curve, right? But that's what we're here for, right? We're here to help, you know, uh, educate our customers and really show them the differences and strategies and that, that they're looking at video surveillance in general, right? And try to make it a more, um, and the way I used to say it, instead of video surveillance and security being a, a cost component within a organization, let's make it a profitability component within an organization. And that's how we can do it with machine learning. Well, I, and I think if we tie that back to Andreas's title there, right? Camera intelligence. We talk about camera intelligence leading to profitability, right? Mm. Yeah. And from my perspective, I just want to add also in, in, in camera intelligence in general, um, there are so many things that um, are, are possible now, but I think that um, what you need to consider, and I think that uh, where, where Meraki comes into play is actually how do you scale this? Because you can do things at small scale, you can experiment with all these uh, things that is now technically possible, but I think it's important to keep in mind how do I scale this to 10,000 stores and how do I manage this at 10,000 stores? And that's where kind of the Meraki ingredient of, of making things simple uh, and deployable and manageable comes into play. And that I think is a critical component also in the area of, of camera intelligence. Well, and, and I think you've got, um, you know, a, a massive opportunity as being part of that Cisco uh, family, right? Um, I think there's opportunities there that and and proven uh, credibility and validity in what Cisco has always been about um, and delivering, you know, quality, large infrastructure and um, and delivering that level of service that uh, obviously Meraki has as well. So uh, this has been and this is why we were talking about Meraki and now we know why. Uh, this has been Matt Moreno, who is the Product Specialist, Global Enterprise IoT, and Andreas Nordgren, who's with Business Development for Camera Intelligence, both with Meraki. Gentlemen, can't thank you enough for being with us today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Kevin. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Andreas. This has been and this is why. I'm Kevin McMenamin, your host. This is an LPM podcast, and we hope to have you tune in again soon. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe. <laughs>